Well, welcome back to the Walk as Jesus Walk podcast series. And in today's message, we're going to focus on what Jesus meant when he said that he is the bread of life. And many understand what this means from an intellectual human stand, uh, standpoint, but few really understand what Jesus meant when he said this. And especially when he said, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. I mean, to so many, this is obscure. It's too difficult to understand what it means. So many of them just write it off or, or count it as just something that he said, and they don't really deal with it. But boy, the implications for those of us in Christ are so deep. So we're going to explore just what Jesus meant in this podcast. So for those of us who are in Christ, who do follow Jesus, above and beyond our physical needs, which we all have physical needs, we need to learn that our spiritual needs, they far outweigh our earthly needs. And especially if we're going to walk as Jesus walked, Jesus said that our greatest focus should be on what he offers and not on what this world offers. Just the opposite is what most people do. Now, we can gain all the spiritual nourishment that we need if we seek to eat the bread of life. We truly can. Thus, Jesus is our spiritual nourishment essential for us to grow strong and be healthy in righteousness? In John chapter 6, verses 25 through 27, it tells us that at one point the crowds were seeking to find Jesus. They couldn't find him, he had crossed over to the other side of the sea. And it was then that it became evident that. These folk in the crowds who called themselves disciples, today they would call themselves Christians, they weren't seeking Jesus personally, but instead they were seeking for what Jesus could do for them. When Jesus told them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, but not because you saw the signs that I performed and the power of God, but because you ate the loaves and you had your fill, you fed your physical needs, your earthly needs. But you didn't seek me for heavenly needs, is what Jesus was saying. And then he goes on to say, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father, has placed his seal of approval. And he's speaking to these crowds um, who are mainly Jews, who are following him for many different reasons. And many of them call themselves disciples. I follow Jesus around. And they really make this claim. But you know what? They were chasing things in this world, just as anyone who doesn't truly know Christ. Jesus said not to chase after the temporary things of this world. He said, our Father in heaven will provide the daily bread or food for those who are seeking him first. Therefore, we shouldn't be wasting our lives striving for worldly things such as a bigger home or boats and jewelry and all kinds of things that this world has to offer. But instead, we should be serving his kingdom, yielding our lives in this world day by day for him to use as he wills. Now back to the crowd, they asked Jesus, what sign then will you give us that we may see it and believe in you? I mean, the, the ridiculousness of this is show me, and then there's no faith, of course, seeing is not believing, is believing in those things that you cannot see. That's faith. And so they're saying, show us something so that we can believe in you. What will you do? Our ancestors, well, they ate manna in the wilderness, meaning when the Israelites were wandering around in the wilderness and God had to provide them with manna. And he provided them with this bread to keep them alive. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you 
the true bread from heaven, meaning himself. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Now, he was offering life not only then to all of those that were surrounding him and all of mankind then, but all the way till today and beyond today. So they said to him, sir, always give us this bread. The bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Give it to us. Once again, they're asking, but not understanding. The crowds still couldn't grasp the supernatural aspect of what Jesus was truly telling them. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you've seen me and you still do not believe, signifying that although they claimed to be his disciples, they didn't place their faith in Jesus. They, they didn't have that relationship with him. As it says, all those the Father gives me, Jesus said, will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive them away. They may walk away on their own, but I will never drive them away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those that he has given me but raise them up on the last day. So his goal as the good shepherd would be to make sure that no one leaves. But we know that people did leave, and we know that more will leave. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. That's his will. That's what he wants. And that Jesus said, I will raise them up at the last day. But once again, this is about a heart condition, not about I think about this or I, I, I prayed this prayer or I, I believe this, but this is a heart condition. So it was at this point that these disciples that were in the crowd, worldly minded disciples, they began having real problems with what Jesus was teaching. Complete surrender and submission to Jesus was really beyond their intentions. They wanted to live a religious life that would allow them to go ahead and keep their lives for themselves in this world. Not so different than really, if you think about it, today's churchgoers who are more interested in satisfying their own needs and maybe freeing themselves of guilt than having a personal relationship with Jesus. Therefore, once hearing Jesus making the claim to be the bread of life, these disciples, these so-called believers had heard enough and they began to grumble. Well, Jesus said, you know, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, this is, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he, he now say, I came down from heaven? Jesus said, stop grumbling among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him will come to me. But they didn't want to go to him. They wanted things packaged the Jewish way, the traditional way the only way that they knew. And Jesus just wasn't going to provide that. Much like today, as I mentioned, we have many people who are in what we call the institutionalized church system, and they got it packaged the way they want it. Jesus is offering something far different than what you're going to find in any organized church. They don't want that. Well, Jesus continued, no one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes, that means places their full faith in Jesus, 
has eternal life. I am the bread of life, he says. Your ancestors, well, they ate manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is a bread that come down, comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now, Jesus is talking about he is giving him his own flesh for all of mankind. And whoever eats from him. Now, we need to pause there for a second. What does it mean to eat from him? You know, many have laughed about this and talked about cannibalism. And we have church rituals made out of this. But what Jesus is talking about, it doesn't surprise me that people don't understand because without the Holy Spirit, meaning that they have to first be born again and transformed and take on a new mind, they could never understand what Jesus was talking about. What is his flesh and eating his flesh? And what does he mean he's the bread of life? Therefore, hearing what Jesus was telling the people, that he was the bread of life, this caused the Jews to begin to argue sharply among themselves. Could, could this man give us his flesh to eat? This is just wrong. And Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Oh, this is really a deep supernatural truth he's talking about. But they couldn't accept it. And he goes on to say, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. And he's talking about now from a spiritual sense, which far surpasses our worldly needs. It's what we need to grow and thrive spiritually. So he continues and he says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me. So if you stop eating his flesh and drinking his blood, is what he's saying here will not remain in me. So do you eat his flesh and drink his blood? And he says, once again, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me. And then he goes on, and I in them. And we know that when we are transformed, the Holy Spirit comes to live within us. That's the Spirit of Jesus. But if we stop eating from Him and drinking His blood, then we won't remain in Him and He cannot remain in us. Wow! This became a monumentally overwhelming teaching. Jesus was teaching something that was beyond human understanding beyond earthly understanding. And as he was teaching it, I know I finally grasp this because of the Holy Spirit, that I know I must each day drink and eat from Jesus for my spiritual nourishment. And if you do, you will remain in him. And if you don't, you will not. And Jesus continues, he says, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me, feeds on me, that means continuously, will live, that means spiritually, because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors, well, they ate manna and they died, but whoever feeds spiritually on this bread will live forever. Well, he said this while he was teaching in the synagogue in Pernum. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before, which he was prophesying of what would happen? The Spirit gives life. The flesh, it counts for nothing. They still weren't getting it. Jesus said, the words that I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. 
He knew their hearts. For Jesus knew from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. We all think of Judas was the only one who betrayed him. There were many people involved. Crucify him, crucify him, rallying with the Jewish leaders to go ahead and have Jesus murdered. Well, he went on to say, Jesus did, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. You can find this in John chapter 6, 52 through 65. Now, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. How many people today who claim to be in Christ can't understand this teaching? And if it was being presented the way Jesus presented it, they too would turn around and go, well, you know, let me just sit here and read my Bible and try to gain an understanding on my own because I can't understand this teaching. Why can't they understand? Because they didn't come to Christ because the Father didn't bring them there because their hearts aren't in the right place. When Jesus saw that these people who were following him were starting to leave, he looked at his closest disciples and he said, do you want to leave too? Jesus asked this to the 12 and Simon Peter answered him. And Simon said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and only you. So Jesus clearly knows who his true followers are. And he knows all of those who simply claim to know him, but don't. Now, just as with the disciples in the crowd, those claiming to be Christians today, without fully surrendering their lives to serve Christ, will end up falling away from the truth when faced with the choice to give up everything in this world to follow Jesus, or they will go to seek some, some other way, which many of them have already found some other way. They'll follow something else. They'll follow their pastor or their doctrine or their church or whatever it might be. They'll associate with that, and that's what they're going to follow. And don't try to change them. They're just like the Jews. For most people, surrendering their whole life is just too great a sacrifice. It's for this reason they walk away from Jesus, just as those in the crowd 2,000 years ago did. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who will eat my flesh and drink my blood, because that's how we gain righteousness, is to be in Christ. For they will be filled, Jesus said. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Righteousness is what we gain when we eat the body and drink the blood of Jesus. Proverbs 21, 21 tells us, He who pursues righteousness and loving devotion finds life, righteousness, and honor. And, and Proverbs 15, 9 says, The Lord detests the way of the wicked, but he loves those who pursue righteousness. Thus, in closing, those who are in Christ must spiritually eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. He said we must. Far too many who claim to know Christ just simply understand this from an intellectual or human understanding. But from a spiritual standpoint, they're blind to what Jesus meant. They're blind to what it means when Jesus said, he is the bread of life. So if we don't understand this, even now, as I have shared this with you, and you gain uh, some understanding, but you really don't fully understand this, well, then you need to seek wisdom from God. He will give it freely to you. So everyone who asks by faith, believing that you will receive it. So. Finally, for those who do choose to eat the bread of life, know that they will gain a deeper understanding of what it means to walk 
as Jesus walked.